Remember back, remember back to the power rule? But what did the power rule say? It said that the derivative of x to the n in some real number, not zero, the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus one. The power rule isn't just something that we made up. It's a consequence of the definition of derivative. But how do we know it's actually true? Well, remember, we already worked this out when n is a positive whole number. Then the derivative of x to the n is the limit of this difference quotient. This is the limit that calculates the derivative. If n's a positive whole number, I can expand out x plus h to the n, and I get x to the n plus n x to the n minus 1 times h plus things with lots of h's minus x to the n all over h. Now the x to the n and the minus x to the n cancel. The h here cancels this h here. And I'm left with a bunch of h's divided by h. There's still a lot of h's in this. And the limit of this constant as far as h is concerned plus a thing with h's in it, well this goes to zero and I'm just left with n times x to the n minus one which is the derivative of x to the n. And this is a completely valid argument as long as n is a positive whole number. But there's plenty of numbers which aren't positive whole numbers. What if n equaled negative one? Well, let's figure out the derivative of x to the minus first power. That's really the derivative of one over x. This is a problem that we could attack directly using the definition of derivative. Here I've written the limit of the function at x plus h minus the function over h. Now to calculate this limit, I'll first put this part on the numerator over a common denominator. So this is the limit as h goes to zero, whole things over h, but the numerator is now x minus x plus h over common denominator for the things in the numerator, is x plus h times x. Now what's x minus x plus h? Well, in that case, this x and this x cancel, and what I'm left with is just negative h up there. So this is the limit as h goes to zero of negative h over x plus h times x all over h. Great, now the h down here and the h up here cancel. What am I left with? I'm left with the limit as h goes to zero of negative one over x plus h times x. Now how can I deal with this? Well, as h goes to zero, the numerator is just one, but the denominator is approaching x squared. So this limit is minus one over x squared. And what we've calculated here is the derivative of one over x. The derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. Now I can use this fact, the fact that the derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared, to compute, using the chain rule, the derivative of one over x to the n. This is a composition of two functions, the composition of the one over function and the x to the n function. The derivative of one over is negative one over the thing squared, so it's the derivative of the outside function at the inside times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of x to the n, if n says positive whole number, I already know this, it's n times x to the n minus one. And x to the n squared is x to the two n. So I've got negative one over x to the two n times n times x to the n minus one. Now a minor miracle happens. The x to the two n and the x to the n minus one, they're interacting so that I'm left with x to the n plus one in the denominator minus one times n is just minus n in the numerator. Now this maybe doesn't look so great, but remember that one over x to the n is just another name for x to the negative nth power. And this, if I rewrote this as x to a power, I could rewrite this as negative n times x to the negative n minus one power. And look, what we've shown is the derivative of x to the negative n is negative n x to the negative n minus one. This is verifying that the power rule holds even when n is a negative number. Pretty good. We've done it now for all whole numbers. But what about rational numbers? So here's a question. How do I know that the derivative of x to the 21 over 17th power is 21 over 17 times x to that power minus one? Four over 17. Implicit differentiation to the rescue. 
Well, here's maybe a simpler case. Why is the derivative of x to the 1 over 17 1 17th times x to the negative 16 over 17? Well, let's set y equal x to the 1 over 17. And that means y to the 17th power is x. And then I can apply a implicit differentiation to y to the 17th equals x. So if I differentiate both sides, I get 17y to the 16 dy dx equals the derivative of x, which is 1. I'll divide both sides by 17 times y to the 16th power, and I get that dy dx is 1 17th times 1 over y to the 16th power. But y is x to the 1 over 17. So dy over dx is 1 17th times 1 over y is now x to the 1 17th, x to the 16 17ths. But it's 1 over that, so I could write this as 1 17th times x to the negative 16 17th. So now the chain rule finishes off the problem. Uh, if I want to differentiate x to the 21st over 17th power, well, that's the same as differentiating x to the 1 17th power to the 21st power. It's chain rule. So that's the same as 21 times the inside x to the 1 17th to the 20th. That's the derivative of the outside function, which is the 21st power function at the inside, times the derivative of the inside function. Now, good news, we calculated the derivative of the inside function. So this is 21 times x to the 1 17th to the 20th power times the derivative of x to the 1 over 17, which is 1 17th x to the negative 16 17th. Well, this is 21 times x to the 20th over 17 times 1 17th x to the negative 16 17th. And 20 minus 16 is 4. It's 21 times x to the 4 17ths over 17. It's 21 17ths x to the 4 17ths. That's exactly what the power rule tells you when n is 21 17ths. We started off just knowing that the power rule was true for positive whole number exponents. And now, after doing a little bit of work, we know that the power rule holds for any rational exponent. What about the function f of x equals x to the square root of tooth power? Whoa, what does that even mean? That's a serious objection. What do I mean by a number raised to the square root of tooth power? Well, what can I do? I can take x and I can raise it to the 1.4th power, by which I mean I take x, multiply by itself 14 times, and then take the 10th root of that. I can take x to the 1.41th power, by which I mean I take x, multiply by itself 141 times, and then take the 100th root of that. And I can keep on going, right? If I wanted to take x to the 1.414th power, I'd multiply x by itself 1,414 times and then take the thousandth root of that. If I wanted to take x to the 1.4142th power, right, I'd take x and multiply by itself 14,142 times and then take the 10,000th root of that number. And I can keep doing this. And I'm getting closer and closer to the square root of 2. And that's really what this function means. It really means to take a limit of these functions I actually understand, functions where I'm taking x to a rational exponent. We can handle this with a logarithm. So let's set y equals x to the square root of 2th power. I want to calculate dy dx. So the trick here is log. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. Log of y is log of x to the square root of 2th power. But log of something to a power is that power times log of the base. So I've got log y is the square root of 2 times log x. Now I differentiate both sides. And I find out that the derivative of log y is 1 over y dy dx. And the derivative of the other side is the square root of 2 times 1 over x. I multiply both sides by y. And I've got dy dx 
is the square root of 2 y over x. But I know what y is. y is x to the square root of 2 power. So this is the square root of 2 times x to the square root of 2 power divided by x. In other words, it's the square root of 2 times x to the square root of 2 minus 1. We're using logarithms to fill in the gaps in the quotient rule. We're not just learning a bunch of derivative rules. We're actually learning why these rules work. Take a look. The square root of 2 here plays no essential role in this argument. I could go back through this entire thing and replace the square root of 2 everywhere I see it by the number n. And what I'd see is that this logarithm argument is justifying the power rule. The derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. And so we're really building the foundations of calculus. We're not just learning how to apply the rules to perform some calculations. We're learning how to justify that these rules are the correct rules.